What Lonzo Thinks is a wide-ranging, free-flowing discussion where I offer up my unsolicited views on everything from movies, music, sports, television, politics, pop culture, you name it. If it's happening, I'm talking about it. My views are unsolicited, but hey, I talk about it anyway. All right. Next on my list of Prince reviews is The Gold Experience, released September 26, 1995. It is his 17th studio release and what I'm doing is a retrospective review of every Prince studio release from the beginning to tragically and sadly the end now the gold experience was was the first record that he released as the artist formerly known as Prince or as the the symbol Um, the previous LP which was come was the last one where he uh, actually did a, a record for Warner Brothers under the name of Prince. Now, the Gold Experience follows, follows up Come, of course. Now, Come was a great record. I loved it. It was one of his best uh, post-90s releases, and it really had me excited for the Gold Experience. Come didn't get the kind of promotion that his previous LPs had gotten, and I think that's mainly because of his dispute with um, Warner Brothers. He, well, he really wasn't into really doing anything but giving them music and kind of fulfilling his contract because Come was not heavily promoted at all. But the tide turned with the Gold Experience. And you can kind of tell that uh, it was it was highly promoted. You, you can tell that Prince was really engaged with this record. And yeah, I'm calling him Prince. I'm never going to not call him Prince. I don't go by that artist formerly known as Bullshit. So anyways... Um, the Gold Experience was obviously highly anticipated. I really was looking forward to it because it was heavily prom- promoted. And um, being so excited about um, his, his quote-unquote comeback because of the strength of the Come record really had me excited for what was going down with the Gold Experience. And plus, I was in a, a, I guess in a, in a place in my life where there was some a little bit more uh, less upheaval and I was under a little bit more control and... Um, and I was really kind of engaged and, and ready to kind of jump into some new Prince music. So, here we go. The album opens with P Control, better known as Pussy Control. And I don't think this was a great song to open up your record with. because Just because of the subject matter and because of the title. Um, P control. I mean, you kind of. I think you kind of alienating a bit of your audience, the female side of your audience, because you know the nasty prince don't bother me at all. But you got to know your limits sometimes. And I think a song like Pussy Control, where it, it's it's a supposed positive song because he's he's talking about the empowerment of women and how they use their um their P control to um you know to to as as a, as a weapon of strength, I suppose. And and so if you really listen to the song, he's trying to be positive. But the title itself, and I've said before, Vince, Vince, <laughs> Prince, uh, sometimes is a victim of his titling of his songs. It go you know from Dorothy Parker to If I Was Your Girlfriend to Pussy Control. Uh, a title can really turn people off, and I think P Control to open up the LP was just a bad choice. I would open it up with. You know something different, of course. Maybe now I think I would open up with now, um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But um, but Pussy Control, he's it's a rap singing hybrid type song. It's a good song. I, I love the beat. I love the beat and instrumentation. I actually I love the the arrangement of the lyrics as well. So as far as the the actual song itself, it's a good song. It's a, it's a great song. It's overproduced a little bit, but still, it's a great song. So I, I do recommend it. But just my thoughts is that it, it was maybe not the best choice to um, open up the record itself. Now, oh by the way, uh, on this record, uh, he, he has a, a number of interludes by the MPG operator. Skip those. And I'm not going to say anything about them other than the fact that they're unnecessary. I, I, I never liked segues or interludes on records anyway. And his, his use his use on this particular record was just abusive. And it really didn't need to be there. It adds nothing. Nothing to the concept. If it added to the concept, then I could be okay with it. But the MPG operator really adds nothing. So just don't even bother with it. Next up is Endorphin Machine. Now, Endorphin Machine would have been a good opener to the 
to the to the LP as well. Endorphin Machine is a, is a rock track. It's a sprawling rock rock track, and Prince is good at the sprawling the sprawling rock tracks. He really he really is, and it, it started from way back with uh, "I'm Yours," um, "Let's Go Crazy." I mean, um, uh, America. I mean, his his sprawling tracks are really really fun tracks, and Endor- Endorphin Machine is just that. It's a powerful song. Um, you know, get ready for something you've never seen. The Endorphin Machine. Obviously, he, he's it's it's a, it's a sex tinged um, song as well. Um, I, I love his screams, his arrangement, the instrumentation, and this song is not overproduced. I think he really nailed it with Endorphin Machine. So it, it is a, a great segue into the rest of the LP, and I think it it either now or Endorphin Machine should have been the opening track to the LP. Next up is. Break it down. I don't want nobody else to hear the sounds. It is um, a slow jam, of course. Now, um, Tevin Campbell also did this song on his I'm Ready record. And Tevin's version is really, really good. I, I give credit where credit is due. I, I never liked the fact that, that Tevin was doing music with Prince because I don't think he really belonged. Because he really didn't, didn't measure up as an artist. And I think his career says that. But, shh. That's the name of the song. It's shh. <laughs> it's a really good, um, really good slow jam, and um, I love the way that Prince opens it up with this um, this drum interlude. Um, and it's, it's it, I mean, because it, it starts off, you thinking it's going to be a hard rock track, and then it just changes tempo and it jumps right into the slow jam. So I always like that, and now uh, that drum interlude comes back. Um, um, midway through the song as well, I think on the bridge he brings that um, those drums back, and I think that's that's uh, kind of indicative of the sexual nature of the song as well. But it's a really really good slow jam. Uh, you can appreciate Prince's version, but also give Tevin's version a um, a listen as well for context and clarity, and you can see how the two songs play out uh, against one another. Uh, of course, I think Prince's version is better, but Tevin's is not bad. I give credit where credit is due. I'm, I wasn't a big Tevin fan, but damn it, uh, his version of shh was good. Next up is We March. We March is pretty forgettable. It's not a bad song. It just it just there's nothing about it that really stands out. Um, I don't listen to it that much, but I don't skip it either. Um, but it, you know, if there's a song to skip, We March is the song to skip. Um, it just really, there's really nothing to it, and and I haven't listened to it enough to really give an objective opinion on it, other than the fact that, you know, if it's if I'm playing this this record and that track comes, I'm not running to the, you know, to change it. I'm just I'll keep doing whatever I'm doing and and not really focus on it. Uh, next is the most beautiful girl in the world, which was the biggest hit from this particular record. Uh, Could you be the most beautiful girl in the world? This is a really sappy song, a pop song, a radio song. It was a big hit. It was a huge hit, one of his biggest hits of the '90s. Uh, really, they say it was his comeback hit after um, after Come. Um, but I'm not a big fan of this song. I guess just because it's so sappy and it's so it, it's his pandering song from this LP. He's definitely pandering with this. And he wanted a hit song, and damn it, he got a hit song. The video was cute and everything, but, I mean, obviously, it's, it's a song that gets played at, like, you know, I guess fashion shows and weddings and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's, I don't like the sappy, pandering prints. I really don't. So, so this song really doesn't do much for me. If it's on, I'll listen to it, but it's not a go-to song for me at all. Next up is Dolphin. Now, I absolutely, positively love Dolphin. Dolphin is probably, yeah, it is. It's my favorite song from this album. Dolphin is a magnificent song. It kind of reminds me in a way of, of uh, it, it, it'll be, it's a good, um, it's a distant cousin, should I say, of If I Was Your Girlfriend. Um, but he's talking about is, if I came back as a dolphin, would you listen to me then? Would you let me be your friend? Would you let me in? So he's 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 using because I, what I take from the, from this particular song is that is that people go out of their way to try to figure out what dolphins are saying. So he's saying, hey, if I come back as a dolphin, would you listen to me then? Because we put all this research in, into trying to communicate with dolphins. So I kind of like how I like that that metaphor and the analogy that he uses with that. And but it's a rock tinged track. Uh, it's not something that that I think you know that wide mainstream people would get into. 
uh, is a kind of a nondescript song. It re- I don't think it got released as a single or anything like that. So it, it's an obscure track. Um, it's filler, I guess, you, another way to call it. But it's, it's one of his best filler songs. And it's my favorite song on this LP. I listen to Dolphin all the time. It's a magnificent song. Do not sleep on it. It's called Dolphin. The best song on this LP. I really, really, really highly recommend listening to it, listening to the lyrics, because it's a very deep song and a song that really deserves your attention. He put a lot of work into this thing, and you can tell the arrangement is great, the instrumentation is great. It's a great song. Give it a listen. Okay, now follows Dolphin. And now I thought, you know, if you want a, a fun opening track, you know, I think that's what it was going for with, with Pussy Control. It was a fun opening track. Now could have been that track as well. Um, um, it's just a fun song. It's, it's nothing really special about it. It's, it's kind of nondescript, but it's a fun, funky party type of a jam. And I love his, his, his vocalization. Um, on this particular record, I love the hook. I, I love the 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 layered the backing tracks, the B the B tracks on this particular uh, record. And that's why I even listen to more than the than the uh, the lead vocal is the backing vocals. Obviously, Prince does all the vocals on the record, but I love how in the background is going now 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 and um. At the end of the song, he starts. Um, he really, he really gets emotive with his his screams and everything, uh, with his nows, and he's kind of hooting and hollering. And I really love the way he did that. The ad libs and everything are really strong on this record. So it's one of the most fun records on this on this uh, album, and I really recommend it. It's a good song. It's a great song, and it's just it's a fun song to listen to. Uh, Three nineteen. Next up, it's um. It's um, more poppy, more of a radio type song. I don't know if it got released as a single or not, but I think he, but it is, but of the records on this particular, um, of the songs on this particular record, Most Beautiful Girl in the World, I think 19 comes up, 319 comes up next as a song that could have been um, a single a mainstream pop single release because it's just a fun it, it's it's not as pandering as most beautiful girl and it's a fun song it's, it's kind of a nasty song but it's, it's more of like a club party dance type song as well so there's nothing bad about it i don't skip it it's, it's a good song shy next up is a more of a, a, a slow meandering ballad um well not 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 meandering but it's it, it's it's a mid-tempo mid-range type of a song nondescript it's filler uh not a bad song at all um it, it's 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 it has a it doesn't really i can't really put it into a category it's not r&b it's not pop it's not rock it just kind of hovers somewhere in that minutia or in that in that in that ether of of you know a song it's a song that's a good way to put it but it's a it's a strong song though so so definitely give it a listen Next up, Billy Jack Bitch. Now, Billy Jack Bitch is another fun track. I love Billy Jack Bitch. I love it. It it takes me back to the early 80s type of a song. The instrumentation does. (laughs) So it has that type of feel to it. Uh, It kind of reminds me of this. this, 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 I want to be your lover. Let's work. Head type of a a vibe to it. And uh, I think. Billy J. Bitch, he's actually um, referring to a critic of his, and that's what he's talking about. It's one of the few songs where he actually kind of, kind of singles out someone. He's actually, and I forget the, I forget the name of the critic, but it was somebody I think local in the Minneapolis music scene who criticizes um, his record. And he kind of went after them with this particular record, but it's Billy Jack Bitch. But it's a fun, it's a fun song. It sounds great. It's a headbanger. It's definitely something you can listen to in the car, or if you're in the house cleaning or whatever, and you're trying to just dancing around or whatever. Billy Jack Bitch is that song from this record. It's a really fun song to listen to. Slightly, just slightly overproduced, but still, it's not overdu- overproduced to the point where it drives me away from it. But it's overproduced to the point I kind of cringe a little bit. Uh, towards the end when he's kind of just throwing everything into it but uh it's still it's still a great song and and um it is one of those ones that you know turn it up to 10 and just let it bang it's just a fun song um billy jack bitch billy jack bitch (laughs) okay i hate you is next now I, i hate you was also released as a single um it's a slow jam r&b cut and uh, I like the subject matter. It's so sad that I hate you, like a day without sunshine. 
So he's um, it's a double entendre, um, uh, uh, kind of a um, I guess metaphorical type song because he's not saying he really hates you. Um, so it's 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 a good slow jam. It, it's it has uh, it has a bit of an interlude to it that I can kind of live with, without the um, the interlude midway through the song, but. Overall, it's not something that that I would say listen to as a slow jam or a get in the mood type song, or if you're trying to get your freak on, not one of those type of songs. But it's a nice, chill type of a song where you just kind of just laying back and listening. Uh, and finally, gold. It's the gold experience. So we got gold, which is I guess the title track. Um, it's a sprawling anthem type of a song, and it's a great fitting end. To the record, it, it's it's in, it's in the right place. It's a very good song. Once again, um, it's a it's it's a pop guitar rock track, and um, it's slightly overproduced. But kind of like Billy Jet Bitch, it's slightly overproduced, but not to the point where it's annoying or anything like that. So I highly recommend it. It's 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 a great song to close out the Gold Experience. It's a very strong one. Um, I like the video as well. The video was was kind of nondescript, but I just kind of like the way they did it. Um, so I highly recommend Gold as well. So the Gold Experience released September twenty sixth, his seventeenth album, and of his nineties releases, uh, I would say it's probably my third favorite. But it's probably his most fun record um, up to 1995. So from 1990 to 1995, this is the most fun record that he released. I mean, this whole, there is, there's not a bad song on this record. Like I said, the most beautiful girl in the, in the world is the only one that I, I really don't really care for. But it doesn't mean that it's not a good song. It's a good song. It just doesn't resonate with me. And We March is another song that's, I guess you can kind of live or die, live live without. But everything else on this record is a good song. This is a very strong album. It got decent reviews and everything, but I don't think it got really the the recognition that it it deserves. It is a really really strong Prince record or artist formerly known as Prince record. And I think he kind of went with his fastball on this particular record because of everything that was going on with Warner Brothers and everything. I guess he's want to say he's showing the world, hey, I can I can still do it. I'm still the baddest man on the planet. And I'll show you why. And songs like Billy Jet Bitch, Endorphin Machine, Dolphin, Now, Pussy Control, Gold, uh, really, really drives home um, that declaration that he's still the baddest man on the planet. Uh, as of that time, back in 1995, uh, he was no, he's no longer on top of the music world. Now there's, you know, he's been supplanted by other artists, and he was no longer, you know, that go-to guy. But that still doesn't mean you're not the baddest man on the planet, because he was. And I think he stopped pandering as much as he did in Diamonds and Pearls, and um, also the Love Symbol record. He didn't pander as much, which I thought. I think so. I think him finally coming to terms with his place in the music world. He's like, I know I'm not going to be 1984 Prince anymore, where you know, where everything in the music business revolves around me. Where now I have to kind of pick my spots to land my punches and still show that I've got legs. So I guess if you want to equate him to a boxer, it's like Muhammad Ali. After the Joe, the first Joe Frazier bout, where Joe Frazier knocked him out, where Ali was never Ali again, but he was still Ali, where he went and beat George Foreman, he still showed the world that hey, I can still do it when I need to do it. So I think that's that's the mode that Prince was in um, when it comes to the Gold Experience. So I highly recommend it. Now and I always kind of um, I kind of say if somebody you know came from Pluto and wanted to learn more about music, and you're gonna let them listen to Prince, uh, what would you let them listen to? You know, if if you if you're picking a '90s record, I think the Gold Experience would be the one to go to, uh, one of the ones to go to. I think uh, Emancipation as well. But if you want to pull tracks from and say, "Hey, listen to this dude," you, there's somebody you might want to get into, playing songs for you know for the Alien like Endorphin Machine or Dolphin, um, even Billy Jack Bitch would really um, serve it. You know, serve them well to say, "Hey, this is an artist I want to learn more about," because this song, this album, this record is very diverse. He has something for everybody on this record so it's a, it's a very user-friendly record it, you know it, you know if, if you're into the nasty prince obviously you're gonna get pussy control and songs like that 
um, or and Billy Jack Bitch. If you if you like the mainstream prints, the most beautiful girl in the world is there for you. Uh, Three nineteen is there for you. Um, and um, if you like the you know the 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 rock prints, the 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 sprawling guitar anthem prints, you got Endorphin Machine, you got Gold, you got records like that to you know to really serve your your taste as well. So and I think. When it, when it comes to this particular record, he was really aware of where he was, like I said, in the music industry and what his fans really want. And he was very accommodating and giving us um, the full repertoire. You know, he, he had his fastball, but he dropped a curve in there, change up, fork ball, you name it, split finger fastball. He dropped his whole repertoire on us, and I really appreciate that. So cop this joint. The Gold Experience. It's a great record. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Subscribe. Hit me up. Twitter. At What Lonzo Thinks. Gmail. What Lonzo Thinks at gmail.com. Patreon. Come on. Drop some loot on me. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. Give me your comments. I really appreciate the comments. They come fast and furious. And I'm trying to get as much content out as, as I can. I know I don't, I don't provide as much content as you want. I'm really busy. So it's. Yeah, I try I have to try to pick my spots to. I, I don't want to just drop stuff just for the sake of dropping it. I want to at least put some effort into it. To really show, share some cogent, uh, introspective thoughts with you, and I just say shit for the sake of saying it because then you're not really not getting much from me. But I appreciate you sticking with me, my listeners, my subscribers. Thank you for your comments. They mean a lot to me. It lets me know that what I'm doing has some value to somebody. And I'm going to keep doing it because there are people out there in the world, thousands of people out there in the world who listen to um, my podcast and my thoughts on, uh, on these subjects. So if it means something to you, then damn it, it means something to me. So hit a brother up. Let me know what you think. Pop it in there. I'm going to hit you back. I respond to every single reply that I get on YouTube. I really do. And I, re I also respond to every email that I receive. So hit a brother up. Let me know what you're thinking. Once again, it's the gold experience. Prince, this is what Lonzo thinks. Bye.